Hey guys, today we're going to talk about how to save you from a civil war like this in Crusader Kings 3. Let's get right into it. Factions are organized groups of vassals that united against you with a common goal in mind. Most of the time they want to strip power from you or even gain independence. It depends on what faction you're actually fighting against. Factions have two very important metrics that we need to discuss before we get deeper into the mechanics. First, military power and second, discontent. Military power is the ratio of power between you and the vessels that want to fight you. It is measured in the size of the levies that they have in comparison to your own. If they have around 80% of your military power combined, then they start gaining discontent. And this can then is pretty much a metric of how mad they are at you and how empowered they feel about the situation. If the discontent reaches a certain threshold, most of the time 100%, they are about to send you an ultimatum. And the ultimatum is a decision you have to take whether or not you go with the demands of your vassals or you fight against them. Most of the time you will of course fight against them because we don't want your empire to crumble around yourself. With all of that in mind, we can distinguish five different groups of factions and put them into two categories. One category is the vassal specific factions and the other one is the vassal independent factions. The difference between vassal specific and vassal independent factions is that vassal independent factions don't need a figurehead. They do not need a figurehead and they do not need other members and people to get involved in the scheme because they simply operate as the counties and the people inside of the counties that they represent. While vassal specific factions require a figurehead had a common goal against you. Members will join into those factions and you can sway them and change their opinion while on the other hand with vassal independent factions you cannot do that because there's no character interaction to be taken with them. We also have a few tricks up our sleeves that can help us limit the number of people that can actually join a faction. For instance, no one can join us when we are allied to them, no one can join us when we have a strong hook against them. They can't join a faction if they are your friends, they can't join if they are your lover. When you're terrified and when they're a child they can't join either. So with that in mind, let's actually have a look at an in-game example of all of this. Now we're in game, so let's look at some practical examples on how to manage your factions and your vassals. When we start as the Holy Roman Empire in 1066, we can go to the factions tab and we can already see two rather problematic situations. One of which is the Slavian Revolt and the other one is an independence faction. The independence faction obviously wants independence from you, but we don't want to give it to them. Especially when we look at whom the members are. As you can see, the members of this faction are very, very important to our realm and are rather large vassals, so we don't want to lose them. And what do we do instead? We either sway them or we give it away. As you can see, all of them are all of them are dukes, none of them is a king, which is very, very good because you can always give them away in that case. They will not rebel against you, they will rebel against your king. But if they re rebel against the king that is beneath you, they will not get any opinion malice with you. When, when we are analyzing the faction, we can already see that we have seven members, five of which are dukes and two of which are counts. Counts are very, very easy to manage. In that case, you just need to give them away to a big account. Of course, we have the problem that most of the counts in this region don't really like us. So we'll just look for someone who is not turned down by our presence right now. As I looked into my council, I was already able to see that this guy, the Duke of Corinthia, doesn't really like us and he desires some of our counties. In that case, we could just grant him the two counties that try to rebel against us as, as a vassal. They will not, uh, those are not the counties that he particularly wants, but he'll be okay with them. And now when we look into the faction side, we can already see that it only has five members anymore. Because the thing we need to keep in mind with factions is, factions can only fight a war against a direct leech. Not against us, we are their indirect leech. They can't have a war against us. So we really have ourselves out with that one already. Here we go, the Duke of Genoa. Monteferrat and Cugnon. There's a saying that you want to keep in mind every time you play Crusader Kings 3. It's called too many cooks spoil the broth. When you look at how many different dukes and duchies and counties we have around here, you can already tell there's going to be a lot of fighting in here. It's not very centralized and very badly managed, manageable. We need to combine them together so we can have big and powerful vassals. Vassals that we can manage and sway and have good opinions and personal relations with. Otherwise, this is not going to be good for the long run as history has actually proven to us. If the, if the only thing that they want is like a county, that's not, that's not a lot that we need to take care of. 
He wants a candy for Clario. We're going to give it to him. And he's already... It is so easy to get a positive opinion out of this. With my, with Miss Matilda right here of Tuscany, she doesn't want the county. She really wants that independence. Actually, she wants a seat in the council. So we better give it to her. But when we look at the council, because of how many vassals we cu we're currently having as dukes and counties, you can see that there are a lot of strong and powerful vassals in here already. And so the amount of people that we can change in here is very, very limited right now. And this is what we're about to change now when combine in things into kingdoms. What I now do is I just let some time pass because to create a kingdom you need 500 gold which we don't currently have. So I'm waiting on that one. But while I was waiting I was going to the factions tab and already after just giving a few counties away that we're not needing anyways, we were already able to get down the military power of this faction to 83% and if we get it beneath 80% the discontent will also stop growing. Now again we reach 500 gold, let's create some kingdoms. First of all, have a look at who may want a kingdom, who may get a kingdom. Where do we have like a concentration of powerful vassals? What you want to do is you want to take a look at where there's abundance of powerful vassals or people in your court right now. So when we look at this, for instance, uh, Duchess, we've got Duchess Matilda of Tuscany, but also, where was he again? Here, uh, Duke Berthold of Corinthia. Those two are geographically very close together. So we were just going to take the Duchy of Tuscany, get into the Kingdom of Italy and just create this tile. We can unite Italy and Corinthia into one single state with only one direct vassal that can go into our court. So we can open up some new spaces for the dukes that are still left in the empire right now. So let's just do this. Here we go, Duchess Matilda grant the title of the Kingdom of Italy. And also granted the vassalage of the Duke of Corinthia. And here we go. Already a free space for a new council member. Now we see we already have two powerful vassals that are very unhappy with the situation right now. So we can form another kingdom right there as well. Bohemia and Bavaria both start with B. That's great. Put them together. What we got right now is actually this love population in our country. Having a civil war against us. That is really, that's really not a lot you can do against that. It's mostly based on culture and on religion, so you could change your leader's culture or your religion, or you could give those lands to um, a leech or someone in your court that has that culture, but the chances of that happening are actually very low. So, best case scenario, you just fight that out. They aren't that strong anyways, and they are also... There we go, there's the next 500, so we go right in here, Duchy of Bohemia, Kingdom of Bohemia, create this your title. Wonderful, do you like me? Oh, he loves me! That is great, you always want to grant those tiles to people who actually love you because the chance of them starting a rebellion against you anyways will slim down by a lot. Also, get him another powerful vessel that we're currently holding. Now this process of accumulating money, creating kingdoms and then giving them away to some vassals and creating actually big realms inside of your own realm is something you want to repeat. From this moment on, I'm just gonna repeat that and get to a point where it gave another way for the empire to be stable and for that to be very few people I need to manage. So now after a few dozen years, what I managed to get out of this is a very organized state. By giving away your leeches to other powerful kings in your empire, or if you're a king to dukes or to counts or whatever, you are able to get a very, very stable state. So look how many people we've got in here. We've got the Kingdom of Italy, Burgundy, uh, Lotharingia, Germany, and Bohemia. We're still like one or two dukes right here, but that's just for decorations. And they don't press any threat to us whatsoever right now. Because if, we, if you go on with this and marry into those kingdoms, get alliances, get hooks on them, those people are unable to revolt against you ever again. They will form alliances with you, you will be able to crush any revolt that is coming along your way from this point forward. What you may be now be saying is, but I lost a little bit of money right here. What is with my income and monthly income? Well, the thing is, you will lose a little bit of money in this process, but you will gain so much in the long run. You will gain so much stability, no more wars. Every time a war breaks out, you won't get no taxes, you won't get no levies. So we really saved the empire in this way. If the only Roman Empire only had this tutorial to watch when it existed, right? Oh, so those are all the tips and strategies I used to prevent the civil war from happening from factions. But if you want more information on, for instance, how to manage your vassals before it comes to faction forming, 
look at this video right here and that one I talk detailedly about how to manage your vassals and how to have good opinions with them. Until then, see you another time.